Welcome back to Main to Play's Games. We are back on the Chisholm Trail. We crossed a couple couple rivers last time, and we paid. Um, I already forgot who it was. Oh no, the Native American tribe that we met last time. We paid them their tax. It was like three cattle, and so I'm not sure how that's going to affect us, but we can move along. Um, last I checked, the cattle were only good, not excellent. I'm sure that was probably the trauma of losing some of their cattle. Um, we're headed to the Cimarron River crossing, so I'm thinking... <sighs> what to do? What to do? I guess let's just go here undiscovered we'll see what it is maybe it'll be some corn some maize and then we'll be we'll have more than just hearts and livers and guts to work with here good to see your faces again got a situation here that could use a steady hand this here stranger wants to put us, the screws to us. Make us explain the cattle drive. Think you can calm things down? I guess I don't understand. We're moving cattle from one place to another. Oh, over grazing. Okay. We paid your taxes. May I introduce our cookies? They do a mighty fine job keeping us fed on the journey north. Concerned. Oh, it's not his name. That's what he is. A concerned... Muskogee Native American. Okay. And who feeds your cattle? Hmm. Do you feed them out of that wagon? Or do you let them graze on our land? How many cattle will pass through here before the grass stops growing? I mean, I don't know. The man is obviously worried about the effects of the cattle drive. What will the party do? Let's ask about the impact. Thousands of cattle will eat the grass, crush the topsoil, and raise clouds of dust. One herd will follow another for years to come. When the land can't suffer any more, the cattle trails will move on. But what happens to those of us who remain? They have to live here. Okay, and what exactly can be done about it? I ask that you consider the harm of your journey now before the problem becomes even worse. I guess we'll talk with George. He seems to be like the most chill here. She is kind of gung ho, and Vicente doesn't. Vicente doesn't know what to do. <laughs> talk with George. We need to be pragmatic. Sure, there's consequences to to the work we do, but we're all just trying to make a living. If I could move Abilene closer, I'd sure it'd sure make my life easier. But I'm only one man. Okay, I guess we can talk to all of them. Better leave me out of this one, partner. Some folks find me a bit, well, prickly, like a cactus. I was just saying. That's okay. I think we need to be understanding. The concerns of the people who live here are valid, and we should be listening to them. If there's anything we can do to reduce our impact, let's consider it. Okay, but that's the thing. What do we do? He's just said that it's wrong, which, sure, I can understand. I completely understand. But what does he want me to do right now? If I click be understanding, then what happens? I guess we'll find out. Like, listening honestly to the man's concerns means someone with a sympathetic ear. Who should listen to him? Oh, jeez. I guess Violet is charming, I suppose. Please consider this. Oh my god. She's not good. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that you're sincere in your desire to do the right thing. Perhaps in time, you'll see things differently. Well, you tried. Yeah, no kidding. You did not do a good job, honey. <laughs> this always reminds me of the... Di is it the Disney or is it DreamWorks movie? 
uh, spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron. I always think of that. Uh, okay. David holds up his hand to hold the wagon. A red buck with majestic antlers stands, grazing peacefully, a good distance from the wagon. Maybe an old wife, an old wife's tale, but the antler velvet of a red deer is said to have a restorative effect on all manner of illness. Okay. It was a prime opportunity to acquire both food and medicine in one foul swoop. If the buck can be felt, that is. Well, I guess Julius should try, because he, everybody else is horrible. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> that wasn't because of that. You got it. Julius lays the deer low with a single rifle blast. The carcass is dressed out and the meat collected, along with some awful for cooking and antler velvet. Oh, apparently it works because we got six herbal remedies, so. Maintaining the wagon. Was that our. Is that our thing? Uh, special ingredients for cooking. Cowboys will appreciate after hunting. Oh, it's hunting. I don't think I want to hunt raccoon. I think I'm just going to push on. Party pushes on past the herd, continuing down the trail. And the uh, reason I push on is because we have enough food. We even have enough offal. Or we did. Oh, yeah. Right there it is. Tan. Tan offal. So I don't think we need anything. And I just don't want to waste the time or bullets to try to shoot raccoon. It's just too tricksy. Alright, well, it looks like we might need another um, morale boost when we get to the campsite. Man, everybody is sad. Let's see what we do. Alright, let's set up a camp. Oh, man. What's-his-face is not going to like what we have to cook. Can we? Yes, that's fine. I'm not feeling too bad. Okay, that's fine. Um, cook for the cowboys. Can we cook without special ingredients? Sure, let's try this. Maybe they'll like it. <laughs> Beats me. Just some... Without any special ingredients, the party scrapped together, scraped together a fairly standard trail meal. Just enough to fill everyone's stomach. Okay. 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 Perfect. I mean, it's better than making poor George unhappy with um, whatever they were, those cake things that we made last time. All right, let's do morale. If we need, if we get any dirtier, we have clothes. But I won't do that until we're down pretty far. All right. So, got the river crossing in five miles. And then we'll move on our way. We might actually be able to finish this trail this time. It's only taking us like 10 minutes to get to the next river. Let's see if there's anything fun. And hopefully we won't need a butt ton of stuff for this river fording because we have some pelts, but this looks like a very low river as well. This guy's uh, bathing with all of his clothes on or he fell in right here. <laughs> a few travelers are gathered here on the banks of the Cimarron River, gauging the temperature of the soil filled waters before they attempt to cross. Well, it's April, so it's probably cold. I'm just going to say. Amanda Grayson. The Muskogee 
Muscogee Nation has ratified a new constitution in Okmulgee to the east of here. And Samuel Chitoke, oh no, 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 <laughs> Shekote has been elected as the principal chief. Like the United States, however, we still have national wounds that need healing. Chakotay hopes the new con constitution will unite the Muscogee Nation, but not everyone agrees that an American-style constitution is the best way forward. Okay. Oh, here he is. Chaco Chocote. Chocote. Maybe this isn't the same person. Harho. The 1866 treaty forced the Seminole Nation, my home, to cede to 2 million acres of our land for only 15 cents an acre. It was required us to buy new land, only one-tenth that size at the rate of 50, 50 cents per acre. Is that what passes for justice in the United States? William Bowlegs. Oh, are you a cowboy? Most people are divided by the war. We're divided by the war. Sorry. I was one of the many supporters of... Oh my gosh. Opothleyahola. I'm sure I butchered that. Seven ways to Sunday. Who refused to submit to the Confederate forces. We numbered in the thousands. The Union promised us refugee... Our refuge at Fort Rowe, Kansas. So we went north. We fought the Confederates three times as we traveled, and many people died. When we finally arrived at Fort Rowe, we were frozen and starving. The conditions were desperate. We had no shelter, no food, and nowhere near at the food was nowhere near adequate. Many more died in the refugee camps, including Opothle Yahola, Yahola himself. Okay. Oh, we just did this. Silly. Um, what do we got? What are people wanting for this? We'll haggle. Yay! Violet is charming. One medicine, one pelt, 19... Six bait. What do we got for bait? I mean, 19 meat we probably are fine with. We're fine with six bait, too, honestly. Let's do this. And we'll see. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Let's wait just a smidge to see what we can do. We'll seal the wagons, 62%. Let's wait again. Moderate, 1.7 feet. Let's wait again, 1.3 feet. We'll wait until we start seeing some morale loss. Yep, here we go. Moderate, 1.2 feet. It's barely like up to our knees and an 80% chance to forward. So let's do it. Without further delay, the party fastens down their supplies and prepares to enter the cold water, careful not to get swept away in the current. It's a fast-moving river for it being so small. Okay. We have one more river crossing, I think. We made it. The party scrambles up the muddy bank and returns to the trail. Perfect. Now we have the Arkansas River crossing, and then we're at Wichita. Let's see what we're doing for time here. I think we're good. We're only 14 minutes in, so let's go ahead and keep going. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's see... Uh, forge for herbal remedies. No, let's get fish then. 
because we need some other ingredient besides awful. It's horrible. <laughs> with Cimarron River crossing behind them, the party looks ahead with some trepidation. Hopefully the trials aren't so treacherous. We will never make it. You need to calm down. We're almost there. See, you're breaking the whole party down, man. Oh, jeez. Julius, Ugh. I should be able to kick you out. Making everybody all miserable. Rabbit spotted. Oh, we met back up with our trails. Trail people, our cowboys. Well now, you've shown up at a convenient time. This here plum fool of a cowboy went and got himself thrown off his horse. Oh no, is it Vicente? No, it's George. I think his name is George. He was trying to act the hero and scare off some coyotes that caught wind of the herd. But which no should go alone, if you ask me. I thought George was very brave, after all. If we can't protect the herd, then can we really call ourselves vaqueros? Is that how you pronounce this? Vaqueros? Be that as it may, the real question now is whether our cookies are a good doctrine. What do you say? Fancy performing a bit of tri trail medicine? Sure, I have medicine. I'll give you the good stuff, too. Well, well. Not only are you a good cook, but you've got a keen eye for medicine, too. I'll wager there's not many this side of New York who could dress a wound half as well as that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now let's move along. See y'all at dinner. Say ya. Up, oh, the herd is happy again. Now we can fish. Get some fish heads. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Go fishing. We should go fishing. Uh, I guess Violet. She's the best. Why you even ask anybody else to do it? Yep, thank you. I know what I'm doing. Okay, let's see here. Some fish here. I mean, I don't need to <laughs> scare. I can't scare away the fish, so. <laughs> Boom! A trophy quality brook trout. Nice. 25 pounds. Where did you go? Oh, my mouse died or something. Like, why did you just put the bobber in the middle of the place there? An old tin can. What are we doing with these tin cans? We don't get a C. What else do we catch? A common shiner. A very small. This was the smallest it could get. It didn't even move. Ta -da. A pumpkin seed. And what do we got here? Okay. A brook trout. Not as good as our last one. Our last one was good. Common Shiner, another tiny baby one. Okay, a flathead catfish. That was weird. It like said I couldn't cast out there, but then it cast out there, so that's strange. Oh, I am done. I caught all the fish I can catch. Will I have eight fish heads, or will I only have four or something? <coughs> Excuse me. I managed to catch 120 pounds of fish. 
I don't have a knife. So that's fine. And six fish heads. Good enough. Well, I can make some menudo this way. With offal and fish heads. Mm. Oh no. The wagon's back wheel catches on one of the trail's myriad ruts. It sticks and jams fast. It will move no further. As things stand, okay, so this is, we can unpack everything, push the car, it'll take a lot of time. Unpack some to lighten the load, or push the wagon out. Let's unpack some. Okay, with the wagon bed lightened, the party pushes the oxen pull. In time, the wagon rolls free. Car goes repacked, and the wagon continues its journey toward the Arkansas River crossing. It's a mile out. Okay, we're... Everybody is sad because Julius... Was it Julius who was like, We're doomed! Haven't even done anything yet. And he's like, We're never gonna make it. Okay, here we are at the river. Our cattle are in good, I don't know, mental health, I suppose. Good physical health. They're excellent. <coughs> Let's get to the river. I mean, if they say that this is deeper than <laughs> half a foot, I don't believe them. The salt fork of the Arkansas River stretches from one horizon to the other. It's the final test before northbound travelers can reach the border of Kansas. Okay, let's talk to everybody. Oh, da, 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 Charlie. This land is good for wintering cattle and for grazing, even accounting for the risk of rustlers. I also pay my dues to the Cherokee, so there's no animosity between us. Although I can't say the same for other ranchers. Oh, good for you. Dennis Bushyhead. Again, what a great name. I've been attempting to collect grazing fees from cowboys passing through this area, but it isn't easy. The post-war treaty and the opening of the new cattle trail has caused a great deal of chaos in the Cherokee outlet. Perhaps we might be able to negotiate a lease and collect a fixed price instead. That would be good. Lucy Clark. The war greatly divided our nation. And the most difficult challenge for the principal chief is bridging a, the gap between the loyal party who supported the Union and the Southern Cherokee. Okay. I hope that Lewis Downing's party will be able to reach out to both factions in the spirit of reconciliation and restore the unity of the Cherokee Nation. He's an honorable and even-handed man. Isn't that was lovely. What do we got for trading? I don't think I have any pelts, do I? I always need toolboxes. Ugh, haggle. Let's try her again. There we go. She's blushing. She's flirting. Let's see what we got. 30 meat, 9 bait, or 1 clothes. 30 meat... Uh, one, nine bait, one clothes. Well, we have enough clothes for two rounds, so let's do this one. You won't need, by the time we, we only have like, um, one more, two more kind of legs of the journey. I think we'll be fine. Seven at point nine feet, I don't believe that. Don't believe it. I don't. How are you going to tell me that there are 7.9 feet here? No way. Uh, so we have six pelts, so that's fine. We're going to wait. 7.9 feet. Where? 6.9. I know, you're cranky. 6.2. Oh, everybody's cranky. Slow in 5.6. 
slow in 4.9. All right, let's take the chance. Let's do it. 83% is a B. It may be kind of like a B minus, but it's a B. I'm, I'm happy with it. Oh, I was like, they're unhappy. They're like, oh. All right, we're floating all along. That poor lady didn't make it. She's cursing everything out over there. <coughs> Ooh, we've landed. Oh, we lost some stuff. As the party uncoaxed the wagon, they realized that with the wagon left unsealed, the supplies have sustained some water damage. <laughs> okay. And it's fine. Okay, I think we'll have to finish off our journey to Abilene in the next episode. I think this is where we're going to end it. We have two more, two more, uh, what is the, like, kind of legs of our journey, I suppose? Technically, the leg is the big, like, from Red River to Abilene. But two more little stops. So we'll do that. And then we'll be done. And we'll see if we passed or failed. So thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.